While many people think that SSH can only run command line programs, today we'll show you how to run virtually any application remotely on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. SSH is by far one of the easiest ways to interact with a remote device. I myself used to use it almost exclusively to work with Raspberry Pis, because it means you don't have to have a screen attached to it, you can just use any screen you have on your phone or on your laptop to interact with the device. Now this does come with limitations, because it means that you're not able to actually run applications that require a graphical window. And Ergedin is an example of this, where it has to open a bunch of windows in order to function, and this simply won't work via SSH. Now it turns out this is actually pretty easy to set up. And if you're running Linux, then this is actually enabled by default and you can check it off and just run it pretty simply. If you're running Mac OS or Windows, you will need to download a Graphical X window manager. And in my case, I'm running XQuartz on Mac OS. Now, in order to make this work, you will also need to have two computers connected over the same network. Because unless you do port forwarding or something like that, then logging in remotely won't work if you're not on the same network. Now, if you get confused, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description because it's full of helpful tips if you get uh, caught up or have any problems. Once you have that set up and ready to go, then we can begin. Now, today we're going to learn how to do something that most people think they need to use VNC in order to do. Now, VNC is great, uh, but some people have a hard time setting it up, and if you already are familiar with SSH, then I think that this is a lot easier, and as a bonus, it's actually enabled by default in a lot of installs. Now, if it isn't enabled by default then uh, on your system, then it's a pretty simple matter to go in and change this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and this again also works on Mac OS, which is super cool. You can go to uh, etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. And if you type nano first, it'll open it in nano. Oops. And here you can see these are all these settings for OpenBSD uh, ssh config. So if we go down, we can see that there's a lot of different things here, but we're looking for the x11 forwarding. Uh, so let me find that. Here we go. So here we can see by default, uh, we have X11 forwarding set to no. So if we wanted this to work, we would need to set X11 forwarding to yes. And then additionally, there's another variable that is X11 use forwarding, and that also needs to be set to yes. Now I'm using Mac OS, so this is a little bit different. On Linux, I believe there would be another field, but overall, this is what you need to do in order to get it enabled if you're using a system that does not actually, oh, here we go, X11 forwarding. Yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so as soon as you have those variables modified to say yes for using X11 forwarding, press Control X and then Y and, oops, Oh, and I needed to open this as sudo. So also if you're opening this file, it is a configuration file. So to write to it, you will need to sudo. Um, so I'm not gonna do that because I'm not SSHing into this, but you get the idea. Uh, so again, this will be enabled by default on most configurations. This is only if it is not enabled for you. You can go into this variable and change that. Okay, so now that we have that variable enabled, we'll need to hop on over to our other computer. And if we're running Mac OS, then we're going to use XQuartz. Now, XQuartz is a graphical window manager that we can use on Mac OS. Uh, it, as you can see, the website is not very modern. That's fine. Um, and also when you download it, I believe, oh no, it downloads directly from the website. So that's great. I thought it might take you um, to a sketchy download site. But if you're using Windows, you can also do xming x server for Windows. And speaking of sketchy download sites, here we have a SourceForge download. Uh, go ahead and enjoy that. Um, and both of these will do basically the same thing. They will allow you to run a graphical X window that's being forwarded over a network. And what that means is you'll be able to run things like Firefox or really whatever you want. Xcalc, our favorite application. So we're gonna go back and we're going to go ahead and log into my Ubuntu computer remotely. And that's going to be SSH. And there's two different ways we can do this. So first I'm gonna start out with the one that we can use on a trusted computer and that is uh, TACY. 
Uh, and this is a trusted graphical X forwarding session. And the difference between an untrusted one is that this will implement several security policies by default to make sure that nothing is happening that shouldn't happen. Um, like for example, trying to record keystrokes or do anything malicious on your computer. This should uh, basically enable, uh, well, actually, sorry, uh, by doing tack Y, this will disable because it's a trusted session. Sorry, not to confuse you. So if we are not wanting to run these security policies and we just want to let everything go, we can use tack Y. If we want to do it in a trusted manner, we can use tack X, which we will do in a second. But let's start out with a trusted one first. We can do SSH tack Y, and then uh, we're going to do tour at 192.168.05. We'll go ahead and log in. And there we go, we're logged in. So let's go ahead and test this by running, let's say Firefox. Now, one thing you might run into is if you're not running your graphical X window program, then this might have nowhere to go. I am running exports here, as you can see, and it's just kind of doing its thing in the background. And after a couple seconds, we should hopefully get to see a Firefox window that is being forwarded from our remote computer all the way over to us. And there we go. Now, if I was somebody malicious, let's say I want to inject something into their browser history. Let's say I want to go to realweirdstuff.com, no, .info, enter. I don't know what this is going to go, uh, go to. It's probably going to be bad, but oh, it just goes to a YouTube channel. That's probably not good either. Okay, it goes to nothing, great. But anyway, now we can accuse them of having gone to realweirdstuff.com. And if we went over to their computer and be like, hey, let me see your search history, they would have to explain what they were up to when they went to that website. Even though we were just forwarding this graphical window and doing stuff remotely on their computer, but we have the full user experience of having a nice GUI to play with. So here, let's go ahead and close this. And this can take a little bit of a second. So what we're going to do next is we're going to open an untrusted session. And in that untrusted session, we're going to um, basically just use a tool that is going to allow us, I'll try closing it this way. We're going to um, use a tool that normally we wouldn't be able to use via SSH. So let's go ahead and again, SSH tack X for a, a untrusted session. So we're going to be applying all those security policies and then our login. One nine two one six eight zero five. We'll do the password. Oops. And then, all right, we're in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run a tool called Ergeden. And Ergeden is super cool because it's a rugged uh, security framework for going after wireless networks, but it does require us to pop up some wire, some uh, windows in order to make this work. So let's do cd ergeden ls sudo bash ergeden.sh. We'll go through the basic menu. We're going to go ahead and select a card to work with. We will select, let's just do a quick handshake uh, tool attack. Say, mm, handshake tools number five. And we're basically gonna do a quick uh, handshake capture after we do uh, some exploring for targets, which we'll first put our card into monitor mode. Then we'll click on four to explore for targets. And as you can see, we were able to pop up a window right here and we're successfully scanning for wireless networks. And this is where it would stop working if we were just using regular SSH. So here we have some targets. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to get a handshake on whichever one I'm not connected to. So I'll select target number two. And we're gonna go ahead and select option five for capturing a handshake. We'll do a deauth attack. Time out of 20 seconds, and let's see it do it. Let's see it do its thing. Now, if somebody were to see you doing this on a Mac OS computer, they would probably be pretty concerned because it looks like you're up to a bunch of bad stuff. And sure enough, bad thing accomplished. We have successfully grabbed the handshake for this network. 
All right, so just like that, we were able to remotely access this Ubuntu computer and uh, hack a Wi-Fi network through it. So we've captured a handshake. We could now exfiltrate this, do whatever we want with it. If this was a computer that had proximity to a network we really wanted to crack, then hey, we've managed to go and use this awesome framework that normally we would have to use VNC or some other more advanced way of getting in. Instead, we can just forward a graphical X window and be able to use all this great stuff that normally we might not be able to use remotely. While there are other solutions to remotely run graphical applications, SSH is by far the most simple to set up, and by default, this is enabled on Linux computers. Now, it's also worth mentioning that for an attacker, this provides a number of unique abilities, including the ability to even inject websites into someone's search history or do a lot of other nefarious things that you can do by opening a graphical window that only you have access to. If you get confused with this, you can also check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description because it's full of details about troubleshooting and things you might run into when you're setting this up. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.